right, hey, welcome back. We are gonna talk about something really fun today. And it's all about getting that blues tone on a budget with just a guitar and an amplifier. The amp of choice, a very popular amp, the Fender Blues Junior. This one is on loan from my friends at Sweetwater. This is their kind of limited edition one with the Cowboy Tolex. It's got a really cool Cannabis Rex speaker in it. And we're gonna go through the controls, dial up a couple different tones, and I'm gonna use a guitar like this, the PRS SE Silver Sky, also on loan from my buddies at Sweetwater. Uh, so there's all kinds of stuff we're gonna talk about. We're gonna take you through all the controls, a little foot switch that gets included, and we'll also bring in a Les Paul too to hear some humbuckers. All right, so if you got a Blues Junior and you want a really great blues tone in a tube amplifier under a thousand bucks, stay with me, we're gonna check it out. Let's do it. <laughs> So you knew we had to talk about some single coils first, and I have the SE Silver Sky from PRS going into the Blues Junior, and when I approach an amplifier like this, I think about the two most important knobs. So let's take a look at our control plate and we'll focus on those. Really, volume and master are the two that I really seek out first. Now you see the master's turned all the way up, and you're probably saying, why, that's crazy, but I'm a guy that I also like to use pedals, and I really wanna hear the amplifier cooking at its max volume and headroom. So the, the master volume, all the way up like that really says this is what the amp sounds like all the time and then my volume just kind of starts to increase ever so slightly and i can get a little bit of that edge of breakup sound the clean but not really clean a little bit of you know uh, dirtiness on it uh, which all sounds great especially for blues and blues rhythm so maybe you know we have a setting like that <laughs> So there's a little bit of dirtiness to it when I dig in, but it's nice and responsive. And the scout sounds great through all five positions. You can take the edge off of that with the tone control. But for the most part, it's pretty clean, and that's a great place to start. Because if you're gonna add pedals, I like to have a nice, clean bass to start with. You hear people say, clean platform, right? Well, that's kind of, for an amp of this wattage and size, to get the most out of it clean, you need to take the master, crank it all the way up, and just use your volume control that point as it's a one knob volume. That's all you need to do, and you're gonna get some nice cleans. Now, on these amps, they have a spring reverb. That's okay. <laughs> It's not very lush, but it's nice for the blues. So through every setting, let's incorporate the fat switch. Now the fat switch will give it a little bit of a boost, a little more mid-range, a little more low end, and you can access that with this little foot switch they give you, or there's a button right here on the, uh, the, the layout the channel layout. Now it's getting that really beautiful Fender thing we like, which is that broken up sound, but the notes are still intact. Yeah, so we'll go back. And this is great, is maybe you're playing something like I was doing. Time to take the solo. That fat switch just adds ever so slight bump in the gain and the mid-range, which is really, really nice. Now you'll notice that when I do the EQs, you know, these kind of guitars can be pretty bright and snappy, so I might actually pull the treble back even more. Um, and I'll usually start live with all of the, uh, uh, EQs at five or sometimes even straight up and down. It's tough to see here. We can even pull them back a little bit because they'll be at five there. So it might be a little bit more of a truer, flatter EQ response. <laughs> Fat switch. Oh, it was on, there we go. So you see it cleaned up. We'll make it a little dirty. to 
to think a lot of the blues players we've loved to admire over the years, you know, your Freddie Kings to Stevie Ray Vaughan's and Albert Collins, Clapton, they push these amplifiers in all different situations. And what's cool with a master volume, we're going to be able to do that as well. So we're getting a great tone now with the fat switch. Let's get a little bit more drive and pull the master back to see what we can get from the preamp. <laughs> All right, so now we have the preamp volume, or the first volume control, pushed up to about noon, and the master at the same. And it's just making the amp kind of work a little harder in the preamp section, giving us some more dirt and some distortion, or overdrive, actually, we should say. So to get a clean tone, we might actually want to turn the volume knob down on this guitar. Now cleaned up a little bit there. Turn the volume up ever so slightly. So now we have a little bit of variation there on the volume control. Fat switch. So we're getting more gain by pushing the, uh, the preamp up first and bringing the, the, the master back. And someone once told me that you can think of this like water and the master is the master valve. So when you have the master cranked, you're getting all that water through um, and then you're adjusting it with the first preamp knob. Now we're actually kind of cutting off the supply a little bit now by turning the master back, thus kind of squeezing the tone a little bit. It's not as touch sensitive to me. It's not as robust feeling, but we're getting more overdrive quicker by turning the volume up, okay? So what we can do is actually take that one step further for our I would say this would be our third choice of tone with this kind of guitar. We'll take the volume, we'll crank that, we'll bring the master down even more. Fat switches on, let's take it off. Now we're getting to a little too furry of a land here for the notes to be discernible, even with the bridge pickup. Bring the tone knob back. So what happens is when you start to push these amps and their preamp sections up like that, sometimes it gets to a breaking point where the notes can be too undiscernible. And it can actually not sound as good as what you had before. That's why I like to open that master up, bring this guy back, and it sounds more like, uh, like there's more air happening. and it feels better to play. It sounds squashed when you turn that other volume up with the master down, and it's not gonna sort of bounce back to your playing and be as sort of uh, touch responsive is what they always say, and that's sort of maybe is what goes into it. But I feel like the higher the master and the lower the volume, the better. And then of course you can always add pedals down the road. But let's take a look at some humbuckers with these kinds of tones and see if it transforms the world entirely, which I think it will. So I had to bring a Les Paul into the equation, and I really have this set up in a similar fashion to how I did the first example with the Silver Sky. Master cranked, but the preamp gain is down much lower now, you'll see, because I really, what's gonna happen is, you're gonna get more overdrive and output because this guitar is gonna push it more. So we gotta bring the volume back a little bit, but you can hear, got a nice, pretty, clean sound. And if we're playing some blues rhythm, Reverb is about six-ish. You could kind of turn it up a little more. Let's throw the fat switch on. It's round, it's warm. Nice. How about the bridge pickup? 
rhythm or middle. It's gorgeous, really, really nice. This amp is killer for the money, absolutely, lots of tones. So we can bring the master back now, crank up the preamp a little bit more. Let's make sure we take the fat switch off. It's tough, there's no LED on it, so sometimes you're guessing, right? We'll put them back in the middle there. Now we're getting this thing to bark. I always play in G, it just sounds good. Yeah, that's working. But you can hear how the master is so important. I mean, we're running them at noon right now and getting just enough breakup and fatness as well. Speaking of fat, let's throw the switch on. Great blues rock. All right, so let's dime it out, but I wanna, I'm <laughs> gonna change the volume on my headphones. I don't wanna kill myself. Now, because of the beauty of the Oxbox, I can take advantage of really cranking this amp and sitting right next to it, because I'm feeding it through the computer back through my ears. But let's just hear what you can get. <laughs> Folks, that's all amplifiers. <laughs> So it goes to show you what's available here. Great, great amplifier. Of course, what we did here is we, excuse me, we cranked the master, but we also cranked the preamp game because that's going to give us the maximum amount of preamp overdrive. Okay, so you get guitar amplifier, you're pushing it, hit the fat switch, drive the preamp game. Experiment with these knobs, okay? Use your ears and let those be the judge, you know? And maybe find a good spot in your house where you can do this kind of thing. You know, what's funny is I've used Blues Juniors in a number of different capacity. I'm actually gonna use it in a gig coming up in a stereo fashion where I'm the only guitar player, and I was like, man, it's small enough, I might as well just do it, right? So that's gonna be cool. Maybe I'll take the Princeton or the Two Rock and just kind of you know, have have something, you know, that's under a thousand bucks, have something that's vintage, whatever, and have a really fun, you know, multi-dimensional guitar rig for sure. Um, but in any case, one time I was playing an arena and they told us we were the opening act and we had to use the band's backline gear. That means the gear that they use. I'm like, cool, I'm gonna get to plug into this great band's rig. It was actually Miranda Lambert's band. And I crack my knuckles like that all the time. Um, in any case, they said, you're gonna use their backline gear. I was like, that sounds great. Turns out they had some Fender amps on stage as prop amps, right? Because they wanted it to look cool. All those other guys' amps were off stage. I played through their Blues Junior and I played it in a couple different arenas that we played and it sounded awesome with a microphone on it. I wanted nothing more than the tone I was getting. It was great, but what did I do? I ran that master hot and then I just kind of varied that volume. And then if, it's, if I want a little bit more preamp gain, I'll kind of bring them back to center. You know, 10 and two is a nice place to start. Or like I said, wide open and then change your preamp game. Either way, dial them up the way that you think it sounds good to you. Use some of these tips I gave you in this video. And more importantly, check out more about not only this Blues Junior, but the other ones that they offer as well. I'll provide all the links below. I'll put them up here in the video as the video goes. Check out the SE Silver Sky, great guitar for the money. This is a Murphy Lab 59 Les Paul. So it's a much different uh, end of the spectrum, let's say, <laughs> of guitar. But I wanted to use one for humbuckers with a traditional type of sound to really you know, get across to you that we can achieve these tones with an amp like this, okay? So lots of fun. I hope you got something out of it. That backing track I used in the beginning, you'll be able to get that too in the links below. I also put it in the comments, but also in the links, you'll find all of this gear and a lot of the other gear that I like to use too. So thanks for checking this out. Thanks to my friends at Sweetwater for loaning me some gear to do some fun stuff. There's more in this blues guitar sound on a budget coming at you. Please stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel, thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one.